All right, next we want to look at some special rules about logarithms or what we call identities. And an identity just means an expression that's identical to another expression. So, for example, if I say x plus x, well, we know that that's identical to 2x for any number, for any real number. This is not an identity because this statement is true for only one fixed value of the, of the variable, in this case, 2. All right, so an identity is true for any value of the variable uh, where the expression is defined. Okay, and I'll emphasize that point as we go along here. So in terms of what we know about logarithms so far, we know the definition that log base a of x equals y means that a to the exponent y is x. And we know that for logs, our restrictions are we must be dealing with a positive base, a base that isn't 1. We'll talk more about that later in this video. And what we're logging must be a positive quantity, so x is greater than 0. We've also talked about the idea that y equals a to the x, which is the exponential function, and y equals log base a of x um, are inverse operations of the other. Okay, One undoes the effect of the other, which means that if I take a log base a and I do a to the x to that, I will get back x. And conversely, if I take an exponential base raised to the exponent log base a of x, that's equal to x. The inverse property is one that people tend to struggle with a little bit at the beginning. So let's just think about this. If I've got 3 to the 4, that's 81. And then if I'm asked to do the log base 3 of that, I'm saying to myself, 3 to the what exponent brings me this back again? Okay, and that's 4. Okay, so you can see that doing the log with an exponential of the same base gives me my answer back again. Okay, and conversely, if I had 3 to the log base 3 of 81, if I say to myself, do the log, 3 to what exponent is 81? I know that that's 4, and then when I do 3 to the 4, what I'm doing is undoing what I just did originally, okay? And I get back my answer of 81. All right, some new identities involving logarithms. So I'm going to take a number. Let's let x equal 100, 10 squared. And that we, we would know that the log of x, or the log of 10 squared, would be 2. Let's take another number, let's take 10 to the third, and we know that the log of that would be 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply x and y to get x times y. So I'm going to go 10 to the second times 10 to the third, which we know is 10 to the fifth. We add the exponents when the bases are the same. And therefore, when I say log of x times y, that would be the log of 10 to the fifth, and that would be 5. Now what you notice, hopefully, is that the log of 10 squared plus the log of 10 to the third is the log of 10 to the fifth. In other words, if we add these two logarithms, if we add these two exponents, we get the exponent of our final product which really is the same as our exponential rule for multiplying powers with the same base. So it seems that the log, the exponent on a product, is the addition of the log or the exponents on the original statements as long as the bases are the same, in this case base 10. All right, now I say that seems to be true. Um, a numerical example doesn't prove anything. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show this to be true in general. So let's take x to be a base of a instead of a base of 10. Let's make it general. a to the exponent m. And that would mean log base a of x, which is log base a of a to the m, is m by our inverse property of logs. Similarly, if we make y a to the n, the log base a of y is the log base a of a to the n, which is n by our inverse property of logs. If we then multiply x and y to get x times y, we would get a to the m times a to the n. We know by our exponent rules that we add the exponents when the bases are the same. 
And so that would mean that the log base A of x times y is the log base A of A to the m plus n, which is m plus n. And so we do see that the log base A of x, y, the answer to that is the sum of the logs of each factor in the product. And so what we have just shown is log base A of x times y, the log of a product is the sum of the logs of each factor in the argument. This is the argument, base A of y, assuming normal restrictions. x is greater than 0, y is greater than 0, a is greater than 0, and a is not 1. So again, what this rule is trying to say is that when you multiply two numbers involving a base of a, then the logs, the exponents on that product, are the sum of the exponents on the original terms. And if that's true for multiplication, then in a similar way, I could prove that the log of a quotient is the difference of the logs, okay? Um, assuming the same restrictions. Okay, we'll talk about how to apply these in just a minute. Let's just bring in one more rule here. If we have log base A of x squared, we know that based on what we just talked about, the log of a product is the sum of the logs. So I could write this expression like so. Okay, assuming all normal restrictions, a is greater than zero, a is not one, and x is positive. And log base a of x plus log base a of x is two log base a of x. So this expression is identical to this expression. So it seems as though when you have the log of a power to an exponent, you can bring that exponent down front and multiply it by the log. Let's, let's just try to generalize this. So if I had log base a of x to the n, that would be log base a of x multiplied n times, so there would be n factors. You could then, using the rule for the log of a product, write that as log base A of x plus log base A of x, and that would be the same thing, n times. And if you add up n terms that are the same, you obviously get n times log base A of x. And so we have shown this to be another identity. All right, so let's use our properties now to, to do a few examples. So we have here the log of an expression, and this expression involves things multiplied and divided together. So the first thing I see in the big picture is I see uh, the division of two statements. So when you log a quotient, in this case it's base 10, you take the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. The log of a quotient is the difference in the logs. I also then notice that here I have a product, 100 times a squared times b. So the log of a product is the sum of the logs, so I could write or expand to this. Okay, so all three of these statements are identical. Okay, if you put in a specific value of a and b and, and uh, work that out, um, it's going to produce the same value. All right, let's keep moving ahead. Log of 100, this is base uh, 10, remember, because there's no little um, subscript, so we know that that would be 2. All right, here we have an exponent on the a, so that can come down front, so I could write that as 2 log of a, and nothing more I can do with these. So this expression is identical to that expression. Alright, write each expression as a single log, state the restriction. So I have here the subtraction of two logs, so we know that that's equivalent to log base 2, 
Uh, remember, we can only use the properties if we're dealing with the same base in, in all parts. So we're dealing with base 2. Log base 2 of the first divided by the second. Okay, so that gets us down to one expression. Uh, you can factor these expressions. So let's see if we can reduce this a little bit more. Difference of squares and the bottom factors like so. That cancels. So this is identical to log base 2 of x plus 3 over x plus 2. All right. Now, we are also asked to do restrictions, and remember when we do restrictions, we have to do so from the original statement. And remember that what we're concerned about with logs is that we're not logging zero or negatives. This quantity must be greater than zero. So we need to consider both of these uh, separately. Let's take x squared minus 9, and we know that that must be greater than zero. So what you're really doing is solving an inequality, and similarly for the second one. All right, and so let's put this back to factored form because we can see where the expression is zero. All right, so we want to look at where this expression is positive. So at negative three and three, that expression would be zero, so we're not going to want these values. And um, if we do test points, we'll find that it's positive here or here. Now I could do that either by testing values or some of you will remember that this is a parabola opening up and the y values in the parabola are positive when the graph is above the x-axis. So the restrictions just for this section are as shown. Alright, so now I'm going to do a similar thing with the other part. Okay, so I'm lining up my numbers here at 3 and negative 2. Uh, this would be 0. We want it to be greater than 0 so we don't want to include those points. Again, we could do test points or think of a parabola opening up and we would see that our values that work for this part are as shown. Now we're looking for the restrictions for the overall log, so we need to find the values of x that are in common. So red is what's common. Anything below negative 3 or above 3 will satisfy that. So therefore x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 3 are val uh, valid values for this logarithm. And there's one last identity I want to introduce. Now when we started off with logs, um, I gave you an expression, perhaps something like this, log base 5 of 25, and I said remember that this statement means that 5 to some exponent is 25, and that worked out nicely to 2. Now what this expression is saying is that 5 to some exponent x is 27. And so we know the answer is going to be a little bit more than 2. So what we're going to do here is we're going to log both sides now. Seems like that's what we just finished undoing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a log base 10 of both sides. And then I'm going to apply um, some of the properties I just talked about. Log base 5 to the x means the x can come down in front. So that's x times log 5 equals log 27. And to get x by itself, I can divide by log 5. Okay, so what I have just done here, now I can type this, in, this into the calculator and get a decimal approximation. But the thing I really want you to notice is that we started off with x equaling this, and we ended up with x equaling this. So we had log base 5 of 27 is x, and we showed that that was equivalent to log of 27 over log of 5. This is what we call the change of base rule. I have changed my logarithm from a base of 5 to, in this case, a base of 10. But the general point is that if you have log base anything that's valid of x, that's equivalent to the log of x divided by the log of a. And we've been talking all along about the base of a log not being able to be 1. You can see that here because if a was 1, that would mean we would have log 1 on the denominator and the log of 1 is 0, which means the expression is undefined. And one final detail. The change of base rule not only changes from base a to base 10, it changes to base whatever you might want to deal with. So I'm going to put a little sub b here, as long as b is positive and b is not 1.